Thank you, Lord. Well, why don't you lift your hands to the Most High God and begin to bless His holy name? What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore. Even angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we say. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth are God. Hallelujah. Angels bow before. Redeemers Network Television. Pastor E. A. Adibui. Delivering the word with passion and power. Our topic tonight is total deliverance. Total what? How many of you will be totally free tonight? Amen. Our text, as usual for this convention, is Joel chapter 2. From verse 23 to 27. Joel chapter 2, from verse 23 to 27. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the parts shall overflow with one oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker one and the caterpillar, and the palmer one, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Yeah. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and honest. And my people shall never be ashamed. Yeah. Now when we talk about deliverance, many of you may not see how deliverance comes from the passage we have just read. But you will see by the time we finish. I will need to do some foundational teaching, some of which you have heard before. Those of you who at one time or the other have heard me talk on deliverance. And some of you have never heard it before because maybe you are coming for the first time. I will need to do this foundational teaching that I've given on deliverance. But after that one, we will go a step further. Because tonight we don't want to talk about deliverance. We want to talk about total deliverance. Now there's a difference between the two. There's deliverance and there is total deliverance. So if you begin to hear some of the things you have heard before, and you say, oh, I already know that, and then you switch off, by the time you want to switch on, it will be too late. You might not even know what we are saying next. The first thing we need to agree upon when we talk about deliverance is that God's people can be in bondage. For years, I used to believe that once you are born again, you can never be in bondage again. But I discovered that when God was sending Moses to Pharaoh in Exodus chapter 8, verse 1, he said, Say unto Pharaoh, 
let my people go. Who are to be let go? Ah, people of God. Let my people go. And then when you go into the scriptures, you discover that even those who are already children of the living God can still be in bondage to certain things. For example, they can be in bondage to sickness. I mean, in James chapter 5, from verse 13 to 14, James 5, 13 to 14, the Bible says, is any sick among you? Who is he talking to? People of God. Is any sick among you? Let him send for the elders. That means even God's people can be sick if they are careless. If they don't do what they're supposed to do, the enemy can come in and tie them up with sickness. And then, even a child of God, people who are of the seed of Abraham, can be in bondage to a demon called the demon of infirmity. In Luke chapter 13, from verse 10 to 11, Luke 13, verse 10 to 11, Jesus Christ set a woman free. And then the Pharisees began to complain that this woman was set free on the Sabbath day. Jesus Christ said, don't you think it is proper to lose this daughter of Abraham, daughter of who? Is it daughter of the devil? How many children of Abraham are here today? Are you sure? Yeah. Amen. Now, he said, don't you think we should set the daughter of Abraham free, who the devil has bound all these years? Now, she's a daughter of Abraham. Jesus said so. And yet, she was bound by Satan. And then, of course, even if you are born again, and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, and you are tongue-talking, and you are even in this congregation now, if you open the door to the devil, he will come in. I mean, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 5, if you read from verse 1 to 3 there, Acts 5, from verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, when Ananias and Sapphira sold a piece of land, and then they brought half of the money to the apostles, when Peter was challenging Ananias, what was it that he said? He said, Ananias, why have you allowed the devil to fill your heart? Who filled his heart? Now, Ananias was one of the, of the disciples. He was born again. He had been baptized in water. He had been baptized in the Holy Spirit. He was attending Bible study with all of them. And yet, he opened the door to the enemy, and the enemy came in. There are many of us who are here today who at one time or the other opened the door to the enemy. And if you open the door to the devil, he will come in. So we find God's people can be in bondage. That's point number one. The good news, however, is that God will set us free tonight. Yeah. I didn't hear your amen. Yeah. <laughs> now, the question is, how do some people become captive? Remember I said we're just doing some foundational teaching, some information you should know. Or if you have known, you need to revised. There are some people who are born captive. As the elders will say, the son of a slave is automatically a slave. I mean, in the olden days, when you buy a slave, and that wife, uh, that uh, slave gets married, why would you? Maybe a, a slave marrying another slave, and then they produce children, you are free to sell the children as you sell your goats. And they dare not complain. Why? Because the slave and the children of the slave belong to the master of the slave. 
So if mama belongs to the devil, it is very, very likely that the daughter will belong to the devil. In fact, in Yoruba land, they have a proverb. They said, instead of situation improving for mother witch, all our children are girls. So, <laughs> witchcraft kept on multiplying. <laughs> Amen. In other words, they say if the mother is a witch, and the daughters that follow her will automatically pick up witchcraft. So there are some people who are born like that. They were born captives. And then there are some people who achieved captivity. They were born free. But they walked into captivity themselves. It happens in various ways. Some people achieve captivity. They walk into it in various ways. Some of them are looking for money. And somebody told them, if you come and you bring such, such and such, I will give you something. When you swallow it, money will begin to come. You may say you have never had that one before. Well, we have had opportunities of dealing with such people before. I have told some of you the story of a man who came to church and said he was giving this charm to him. And they told him he would become extremely rich. But after several years, he would die. Now he swallowed the thing. He didn't become rich. But when the thing got inside, he began to eat him up inside. So when he saw that the days of death were drawing near, he came. We prayed for him, and he vomited the thing that he swallowed. And for weeks, he was coming to church rejoicing. But after some time, we didn't see him again. So we did a follow-up. When we got there, he said, ah, you have come late. We said, what do you mean we have come late? He said, they told him that he swallowed that first one wrongly. Which means <laughs> he has now swallowed it rightly. <laughs> I don't know what happened to him after that. And then some people are made captive. Some people became captive by some method or the other. One way is by dedication. Many, many of us who were born, well, at least in some areas of the country, as soon as you are eight days old or something, they take you to one idol or the other. And they put your two feet on the top of the idol and they chant some incantations telling the idol to look after you. Now, the idol is nothing. But there are some demons surrounding that wooden or, or stone something. Some of you, when you were born, they threw you into one river or the other. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And before they pick you again from that water or from that river, there, is, there are certain things they have to do. They pour some libation, they do this, they do that. Unknown unto you, at that time, you have been dedicated. And the devil can turn around and say, I was sitting quietly in my house when they brought this one to me. Now, that, there are captives like that. You have heard the story of a girl who came to us once and said, Sir, I want to marry. I've seen a, a handsome young man who says he wants to marry me. I said, congratulations. Uh, she said, the matter is not as simple. Because my father told me that the day I marry, that is the day I will die. I said, Why? She said, because when I was young, I had been dedicated to mommy water. How many of you know what I'm talking about? 
Don't raise your hand. I don't want people to see you. <laughs> Amen. So I said, well, don't worry yourself. Give your life to Jesus. We break the curse on you. The link between you and me, my mommy water will be broken. And we did what needed to be done, which we shall do tonight. And you shall be free tonight. And for years, I didn't see her until one day I was attending a wedding. I think at First Square Gospel Church in Yaba. And as I was entering the church, there was this lady breastfeeding a baby. And she looked at me and said, ah, Pastor, do you remember me? I said, of course. You are the Mami Water Girl. <laughs> and we laughed. So I said, ah, where, is the, where is the man? And he pointed the husband to me. I said, so Mami Water did not kill him. This girl was dedicated to Mami Water. If she had not come for deliverance on the day of her marriage, the poor man would have died because the devil will claim, this is my wife. How come you say you want to claim my wife? And there are some people who become captives because a curse has been pronounced on them. I don't have the time to go into all the details, but there are some people when you curse the father, the children become cursed. There are some people who have been working so hard and they have been failing again and again. They don't know why. It's because there is a curse somewhere up there that is working downstairs. But tonight, even if there is a curse, the curse will be broken in Jesus' name. And then some people become captive because they are deceived into it. They are deceived into captivity. They don't know what they were entering into. But somebody said, no, if you come and you do this and you do that, then this will happen. There are many people here. And I say in this country, not here. Who belong to the Freemason? Or they belong to or cutting group or the other. And they deceive them by saying, listen, Bishop so and so is there. Archbishop so and so is there. Senior Apostle so and so is there. If it is not good, do you think a bishop will be there? And then they go in there. And they show them that there is a Bible inside the place. So they relax. I mean, I remember one case very well. There was one big chief somewhere who needed healing desperately. And I went there to pray. I told him before I prayed, I said, if you give your life to Jesus, he will heal you. So he said, oh, I'm ready. So we prayed, and nothing happened. So I said, some men there to go and fast and pray. They went, they fasted, they prayed, nothing happened. Then I sent my own two personal prayer warriors to go into that place and fast for seven days without food and pray for the recovery of this man. They went, they fasted, they prayed, nothing happened. So I said, all right, it means this is my own personal assignment. And I decided I will fast for 21 days for the deliverance and healing of this man. I just took that decision. But that day, God spoke to me. I said, son, if you want to fast, it's OK. Fasting is good for you. But don't fast because of this fellow. I said, what? Is your child, is a Christian? God said, no, it's not my child. How many children of God are here? <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> well, we shall see. So I said, but Lord, he, I mean, he confessed you as Lord. He said it with his mouth. 
And then the Lord said, all right, all right, don't let us argue about it. You go to him and tell him, if you are a true child of God, then come out of the Ogoni court. Come out of this court. Come out of that court. Come out. Ah. I said, I, I'm not sure we are talking about the same person. <laughs> you know, at times we can be silly, thinking we know more than God. Anyway, I went to the man, and I said unto him, Well, thus says the Lord, if you want to be healed, you must come out of the following courts. He looked at me and said, Go, I will send for you again. Okay. So I left. After I left, he sent for a bishop. A bishop of the church. And when the bishop came, he said, Somebody came here today and said that I must come out of the following courts. The bishop said, If that thing is bad, will I be there? I am your bishop. Don't buy these small boys. They, what, what do they know? So the next time I went to visit this old man, he said, don't come here again. Of course, that's the truth of the matter. So some people got in. They didn't know what they are entering into, but they have, they've gone into it. If you are one of such people, God will set you free tonight. But then there are some people who are made captives by direct attack. I mean, the enemy just decided that they want this fellow. And whether you know it or not, the enemy has been trying to capture you. I mean, you, for a long time. For some of us, the enemy has succeeded. Glory be to God. <laughs> some have been captured by the enemy. But the Lord will set them free tonight. Yeah. Let me show you that from the Bible. Psalm 124. From verse 1 to 3, and then verse 6. Psalm 124, 1 to 3 and 6. He says, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick, when their wrath was kindled against us. Look at verse 6. He said, Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. Some of us escaped. They were not able to catch us. Hallelujah. <laughs> but if you look at from verse, five, verse 7 to 8, he said, Concerning some people, he said, Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. Some people got into the snare of the fowlers, but by the grace of God, they escaped. He said, The snare is broken, and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who has made heaven and earth. Direct attack of the enemy. That is one of the most prominent sources of captivity. Now comes the question. If a man is in captivity, will he know? Is there any way by which you can become aware whether you need deliverance or you don't? Well, there are some people who know without any doubt at all like a bird in a cage, they know they are living in captivity. How do they know? Oh, well, if you put a bird in a cage and the bird wants to fly out, will it be able to do so? No. Every time it makes an attempt, it will just discover that there is a cage up there and it wants to go to the right, it will be blocked. Tries to go to the left, Blood. Forward, blood. Backwards, blood. There are people like that. Everything they had ever tried had failed. They will hear that, okay, this particular business is the best one now. You try it in three months, you become a millionaire. Because A has done it, B has done it, C has done it, up to X. 
And now you are Y or Z. Go and try. <laughs> he will try what has made other people millionaires will make him bankrupt. Why? Because he's in a cage. The enemy has captured him. If you are like that, tonight is your night. Because we are going to be free tonight. There are some people who are just vaguely aware. They're not too sure, but they have a rough idea that things are not all right. But they can't actually put their finger on it. They know things could be far, far better than they are. Spiritually, materially, physically, they know things can be better. But they cannot really say what's wrong with them. Oh, it is because they are in a trap. And the Almighty God will set you free tonight in Jesus' name.